Hey beautiful humans, I'm Ryus DX and today we're going to talk about why the Mario and Spongebob movies are practically the same movie. Now before you eat up a fire flower and burn my cabin to the ground, hear me out on this. In today's creative world, it's practically impossible to be completely original anymore. Every single media entity you see is going to be influenced or inspired by something that came before it and as we progress as a society, it only becomes more and more apparent. In a sense, it's why remakes and reboots are so much more prevalent than they ever were. Executives simply don't think new ideas are all that worth it anymore. But that's a whole can of worms for a whole nother day, so let's just keep it like that. The Mario movie has been chaotically successful in the box office, not only becoming the biggest video game movie of all time within a week, but outright besting Frozen 2's first week as well, and basically being on its way to becoming the most successful animated movie in general. And so it's gonna be pretty exciting to see those numbers when they're finally final. But it hasn't been without some criticism of the plot itself and its writing. I personally enjoyed the plot of the movie, but I couldn't help but notice a huge resemblance to a certain Yellow Sponge's first theatrical outing. So I know that most of you don't believe me at this point and think I'm talking absolute nonsense, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the plot outlines of both the Mario and the Spongebob movies and dissect where their similarities lie. But I do want to emphasize that that's not necessarily a bad thing, and at the end of this video you will see why I think this ultimately was a good thing to mimic from the Spongebob movie and why it's contributed to Mario movie's broad appeal. So well, if you don't want to be spoiled by the way, well, I'm not going to say click off the video because I need my coins, but uh, you have been warned. Let's start with the Spongebob movie as it might have been a hot minute since you've seen it. This movie came out back in 2004 and it chronicles Spongebob's journey to the death trap that is Shell City. You see, the whole plot of the movie is that Spongebob is coming off a depressive episode due to him being rejected from becoming manager of the Krusty Krab 2 because Mr. Krabs simply looks at Spongebob as a kid. And kids can't manage restaurants, oh no no no. But Spongebob finds himself in a pickle when he unintentionally turns Mr. Krabs into a practical corpse after giving him one of the worst character evaluations of all time. Because before Spongebob gave this glowing review of Mr. Krabs' character, King Neptune accused Mr. Krabs of stealing his crown due to some damning evidence, and Spongebob's character assassination was all he needed to strike. In an effort to right his wrongs, Spongebob exclaims that he will go to Shell City himself to retrieve Neptune's crown in exchange for Mr. Krabs' life. He's basically laughed in his face because he's looked at as a simple kid that can't do anything, like manage a restaurant, so how can anyone expect him to go on a dangerous journey to Shell City to retrieve this crown? But Spongebob denied a face of danger and go off with Patrick on this long, arduous path to what's basically a death zone for all sea creatures. It's a journey that's full of danger, surprises, and a ton of self-doubt. Kids. We're not kids! Open your eyes, Patrick! We blow bubbles, we eat ice cream, we worship a dancing peanut for corn's sake! We don't belong out here! This moment in the movie that you just saw is gonna be really important for later on in the video, so keep it in mind. But this is probably SpongeBob's biggest challenge in mentally in terms of getting to Shell City. Because in this scene, he's battling his inner demons, telling him that he's just a kid and that he cannot do this mission. More on that later. Despite all the hardships and nearly dying, Spongebob and Patrick do manage to get to Shell City and have a legitimate chance at saving Mr. Krabs' life. But when they return to Bikini Bottom, they discover that Plankton has transformed the town into the ultimate ego booster as he's taken control of all the inhabitants to tend to his every desire and whim. This all cultivates the Plankton's ultimate burn of the movie. Because I'm an evil genius, and you're just a, a kid! <laughs> a stupid kid! <laughs> Funny how they emphasize Spongebob being a kid throughout this entire film, right? But y'all know what happens, Spongebob spills all the courage he's been building up this whole movie coming to the realization that just because he doesn't fit society's definition of a man doesn't make him any less of one, as he effortlessly takes down Plankton of all his minions, restoring peace to Bikini Bottom in his own childish way, rocking out to Goofy Goober Rock. He also proves himself to be worthy of a responsibility and you know, it's just such a beautiful message about self-worth and never giving up. Now let's dive into the Mario movie. So Mario has quit his job to pursue a lifelong dream of starting his own plumbing service with his brother Luigi. They both get laughed in their faces by their old boss Spike, who doesn't believe they can do anything worthwhile. Later on, Mario and Luigi join their family for dinner, and Mario basically gets berated for jumping shit from a stable job to do something that no one in his family thinks is going to work. He even gets a little guilt tripped into thinking he's dragging his brother down with him. Later that night, Mario sees that a major manhole leak is happening in the city, and Mario drags Luigi seeing this as their big chance to pull off one of the most ridiculously impressive showcases of plumbership, thus lifting their service to the sky. Is plumbership a word, by the way? While they pathetically fail at fixing the leak, 
week, the brothers do find themselves in the strange green pipe that separates them into a new world. Luigi becomes stranded in the dark woods area where he's eventually taken captive by the evil Bowser. Meanwhile, Mario meets Toad, who takes him to the Mushroom Kingdom to meet Princess Peach, who Toad says can help Mario find his brother. After making his way through the city and castle, Mario meets Peach, who herself is embarking on a quest to gain allyship for the Kongs to fight against Bowser and his army, who are threatening to take over the Mushroom Kingdom with their power star. Peach lets Mario tag along, albeit after a humiliating show of acrobatics. They eventually get to the Kongs where the apes initially refuse to lend their army, but Mario makes an enticing offer they can't resist, which is that if he defeats Donkey Kong in a fight, they have to offer up their army. Pay attention to that because practically everyone says Mario is crazy for putting that forward, even Peach herself, but Mario doesn't let his motivation to save his brother get deterred even after being heavily beat up by Donkey Kong in the fight. With a combination of some pure luck and a convenient power up, Mario overcomes the odds and takes down Donkey Kong. Mario is officially on a high having done something so impossible and riding in style on the way to save his brother, but then Bowser's army crashes the resistance and sends Mario and Donkey Kong into the abyss leaving Peach with no choice but to submit to marriage. This is where Mario and Donkey Kong seemingly find some common ground, as they both have fathers that don't think very highly of them, so both of them feel like they have something to prove. The movie finally cultivates into this final battle between good and evil, as Peach pulls a fast one on Bowser, Mario and Donkey Kong crash the wedding, Luigi is saved, and suddenly Bowser's entire castle gets transported to Brooklyn. But Mario then gets relentlessly beat up by Bowser, who is furious at how his plans have failed. But despite Mario being a quarter of the size and strength, he repeatedly gets back back up, swearing to never give up to be brilliant. He and Luigi eventually grab the power star, take down Bowser, and become not just world-renowned superheroes, but also successful plumbers. Mario's dad is proud of him, and everyone's happy. So alright, these are clearly two different enough films to stand their own. I'm not saying that they're exactly the same, that Mario basically ripped off Spongebob, but they do share one striking resemblance that is very much rooted to the heart of both films, and that is the characters, specifically the protagonists. So Spongebob and Mario, both of them are are underestimated heroes that have to break through people's perceptions of them. Spongebob being told he was just a kid is not that different from Mario being told to give up. Both characters embark on journeys much bigger than them, seemingly according to the outside eyes, in order to prove something to those around them. In fact, Mr. Krabs and Mario's father are practically serving the same purpose here, being a large and important voice in their lives, saying they can't do something that leaves a significant impact on them. Throughout both of their journeys, both characters encounter obstacles that seem way larger than what they can handle. For Spongebob, he has his tough his moment when he and Patrick have to cross that deep, dark, and treacherous trench, almost giving up on himself at that point. For Mario, it was when he was trapped in that sea creature of Donkey Kong, reminiscing about how his father was right about everything he was in his head. But both of these characters somehow get past these obstacles. At the end of the day, they realize that, as impossible as the odds are, they're the only people that can do this impossible task, and they have to step up to the plate and succeed in it to save the world. Spongebob and Mario both do that, Spongebob with a thriving musical number, and Mario with just being like a pure badass, honestly. And so, both characters have their shining moments, and both characters prove to those around them that they are capable of more than what they look like. And I gotta say, it's a beautiful message that I never get tired of. The Spongebob and Mario movies are not the only movies that have this plotline. There are so many different plots, both in movies, TV shows, video games, you name it, that adopt a similar plotline. Everyone just sort of adds their own little, like, dashes of sprinkles, colors, personalities, world building to their version of the storyline, and it creates all these different films and TV shows that we all love to death. And so it's not a bad thing that Mario seemingly took a similar character development arc that other movies have done, such as a Spongebob movie. However, I will say that there are some similarities, but it only makes the movie that much more impactful to me because it makes you realize why I enjoy the Mario movie so much. When I saw the Spongebob movie for the first time, it really spoke to me as a kid because it made me feel like I am a kid, but I can do so much in this world. As cheesy and cringy as that sounds, the Spongebob movie made me feel like that, and if a movie makes you feel those deep emotions and helps you take something to your real life, then the movie really did succeed at its job. And so, when I watched the Mario movie, I had a similar sentiment come to my head, and I realized that was because it reminded me of that sentiment that I got from the Spongebob movie. And so, though the Mario movie is telling practically the same story and lesson, it's just as effective at it, because it reminded me so much of that in a positive way, and I think that's just an example of very effective, efficient storytelling. You choose an arc that might not be the most original arc, but it is familiar to people all around, and it's an arc that makes sense for Mario. It's hard to imagine them crafting this movie in any other way. I'm sure there are other things that they had on the table, but I feel like this was a really effective way to introduce Mario as a character that everyone can empathize for and really root for throughout this entire journey. And so that's why the Spongebob Mario movie are practically the same, but they both shine in their own ways. And so tell 
Tell me what you think about the Mario movie in the comment section below. Do you agree with this analysis or do you think it's a completely different storyline? I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you want to learn more about what critics are saying about this movie, then go ahead and check out the link in the top left corner. But alright y'all, thank you so much. This is Riders, riding out.